Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be discussing about Speedscape. Uh, before that, this video is brought to you by Armo, Commodore, Avesha, Sysdig, Speedscale, SlimAI, and Teleport. So big shout out to all the members. Make sure to check them out. Now, testing is not something which is new. Uh, people have been doing it. People have been writing writing the mocks uh, for their APIs and testing that. In, in Kubernetes ecosystem also, it is happening, but it is kind of difficult to generate the actual or take the actual production data and replay that same data in your staging or development clusters. So it is difficult. Uh, and speed scale aims to simplify this problems with many other features and add on capabilities. On high level, uh, speed scale lets you replay real world traffic. That's uh, one of the biggest USPs of using speed scale. So basically you can take the production data. We'll be doing that in the demo. Take uh, one production data from a particular cluster and replay that onto any cluster in your local cluster as well. Yes, you can do that. API performance testing. So whenever you are running the tests, you will be able to monitor, you'll be able to basically uh, benchmark the performance of your APIs. What happens is, let's say you created a version of your API and you did the test. Now you did the next version of your API, you should be doing tests to see whether that new particular features add any latency uh, to your previous tests or previous load use case, like the actual production traffic that was coming, is your new API feature performing better or not? Uh, load and chaos testing, yes, speed scale does give you the capability to, to use this use case as well to load uh, load test your Kubernetes clusters or inject some of the chaos like latency chaos, you know, 500, 400 errors on the fly. Creation of uh, mock creation. So it automatically generates the mocks and it also gives you the power to mask some of the details that you do not wish uh, to be displayed in the reports or, you know, taken in the data like passwords and stuff like that. And also the biggest uh, advantage I would say here is the third party APIs. Because often your application won't be, uh, you know, a single application not dependent on the third party APIs. So your application might be dependent on Stripe. Uh, your application might be dependent on um, Google APIs. Even that will be intelligently mocked uh, the values will be parameterized. So it will be, you know, uh, mocked in a way that speed scale will be able to capture those and run that same production traffic in other clusters. So I think that's a superpower kind of stuff that speed scale uh, intelligently do. Test before the release. Yes, you can use uh, speed scale to integrate in your CI platforms in your GitOps platforms. I'll show that and test before the release. Uh, how it does that? So basically, if you're familiar with the service mesh ecosystem, you already know that uh, sidecar pattern. So you have a single pod and you have your application pod and then you have the sidecar attached to it. So speed scale uses same. Uh, it can, I think, use Istio, uh, but it, it, it can inject its own sidecar and then it will be able to capture all the details and also provide you out of the box minimal level of uh, service observability as well. Um, that's where it is, you know, giving you the API performance stuff, the P99s and all, uh, so on and so forth. So it uses the sidecar to get all the details, uh, to capture the traffic and then replay uh, the traffic as well. So speed scale 14 day trial is, is free. Uh, you can also try that in the interactive demo, but we'll be doing it from scratch. So you can see that service mocking, uh, the feature that I told you. So it can also, you know, uh, all the external APIs can be mocked. So you can sign up for the free trial uh, by clicking on the free trial. But I already have speed scale. So I'll directly go to app speed scale. We'll create two new clusters and uh, check out the behavior for that. So let's go to the console. Uh, so we'll be creating two clusters. So this is the first cluster, COK3 speeds, create speed scale. So you can see uh, the cluster has been created and in the UI, it must be creating that. Um, now let's switch the region, CO region LS. So this one is London one. Uh, let's switch to maybe Frankfurt. So CO region set FRA1. And again, run the same command. 
speed scale, let's call it speed scale two. So you can see uh, this cluster has also been created. If we check the UI, we can see that the speed scale cluster is being created in London one. And in, if I go to the FR edition, we can see that the speed scale two cluster is being created. So both the clusters are ready and I have exported the cube config variable. Now let's run kubectl get nodes. Both the places. You can see speed scale and speed scale two. So both are both the clusters are up and running. So now we need to connect these to speed scale. So for that, we will be using speed CDL. So I already have speed CDL installed. You can just uh, download the binary as mentioned uh, in the quick start. And if you are unsure where to go, you can log into your speed scale account uh, using the free trial, go to the quick start and it'll tell you how to install the speed CTL binary. So after this, what we'll do is speed CTL install, obviously. So let's do that speed CTL install on this particular cluster. This is a Kubernetes cluster. So what it will be doing is, uh, so this is our service. It will be using the speed scale go proxy to capture the traffic and then a speed scale operator will be installed and uh, then it will be masking all the data as per the configuration and then sending it to the speed scale cloud, which is actually the S3 bucket uh, for each particular tenant that signs up onto speed scale for a free trial or a paid account. So install the operator now, we'll say yes. Uh, which flavor of Kubernetes you're running, uh, we'll say others. Our cluster should be called, so this was which region, just let's check. FRA, so we'll call it speed FRA. Enable data loss prevention to redact sensitive information before it leaves your network, yes. And now it is installing onto the FRA cluster. Uh, let's come to the London cluster. And what we are going to do is we also need to install the uh, application. So we'll be using a potato head application. So let's install the potato head application as well onto the cluster. So we can quit speed scale at this point of time because we do not want any of our services to be getting annotated because this particular cluster, the FRA will be only using to replay the traffic. So we'll quit over here and that is done. Uh, but for this particular cluster, we'll do again speed CDL install, Kubernetes, yes, other. So it will again be installing that and we'll call it speed London. And here also we'll be deploying the potato head application. So you can think of the FRA region to be the staging cluster where we want to replay our traffic and the London region cluster to be the production cluster. So we'll choose the default namespace deployment. Yes, add it to the deployment. So the following annotations will be added to the workloads. Let's click yes. So it is patching the potato head workloads, which we want. kubectl get svc. We can see uh, the load balancer IP. So let's use this and try to hit our application. So our hello potato head is here. Let's go and kind of refresh this so that we, we see the traffic. So this is the speed scale UI. Uh, now we have seen that uh, since we hit a couple of times the potato head application, uh, we can see the traffic getting generated over here. So this is a service map that tells you uh, the relation uh, between different services. Uh, and this is the traffic that is being captured. So if you take a closer look and you click, there are multiple things that are getting captured. One is the headers, which is very good. So you, you get the information of all the headers which are getting captured. Uh, then the request, the response, what is getting captured over here and some of the tags. So I think that's pretty neat uh, that it is capturing all this information. Uh, we can copy the curl command as well and we can download uh, download this. 
uh, now what we are interested in is actually capturing the data or the live traffic that came to this particular cluster in the last 15 minutes and record that. So let's click on the record button and we want to capture this from this particular time range. Let's click next. And we want to replay the traffic in the FRA region in the default namespace for our potato head application. So basically we have taken the live data from one cluster in a region which is in London to and replaying the data, the live traffic data in the other region. So let's do that. Now, this, this is called the replay configs. So there are multiple pre-built replay configs, uh, like standard one, which is exact replica of what you are replaying, uh, chaos, like slow, uh, creating a slowness, 10% slowness, a performance of 100 replicas. So we'll first do the standard one, or we can also do the flash sale one that runs multiple copies uh, of it. So let's do a flash sale one and click next and then start the replay. So it is starting the replay and soon it will be generating the report. Meanwhile, it is doing that. Let's go back to traffic and select one of the example payment application. Why I want to show this? Uh, because the service map here in, looks interesting. Uh, so you can see that here the example payment app is all connected to these, these third party services. So let's say you are working as an employee in one company and you just are focusing on one particular application. So you exactly knows where all this app is getting connected to. So I think that kind of service in, uh, interactive map is, is very uh, great. And you can also, when you click this, it will change the view like this to this. All the requests that in the past 15 minutes that have gone from this to this, a developer can analyze. So these are the out connections that are being made. And if you click, you will be able to see the headers for that. You'll be able to see exactly what are the headers for that. It will be a great information. So I think that's pretty neat uh, in my opinion, uh, because that not only helps the developers to focus on their application, but also uh, they do not have to go th through the fancy tools to analyze what all uh, connections my application have with other uh, applications and what our calls are going on. So this is DLP. Uh, you can create DLP use rules. If you go to the website, you can enable DLP. So you need to enable that uh, DLP and it can work on the following data types. So you can uh, get the DLP configuration. You can also specify the keys and the values. So, so this is configured to redact the sensitive data uh, and the PII from the HTTP traffic. So basically any data that goes to the S3 bucket of speed scale uh, or the reports, the data will be uh, redacted over there. So all the sensitive information you can give um, in these type of files. Also, let's look at some of the other reports uh, which are there, uh, which are like pre-built reports. So you can see you get the performance uh, metrics. So you get the latency with a very good graph. You get the average over here. So you can see the response time of the service under the test during the traffic replay. Also the memory. Now, again, memory and CPU will play a very important role uh, because here no, met no metric data is there, but you can see the memory consumed and the CPU consumed. So you can adjust your CPU and memory resource limits accordingly when you are deploying your workload with respect to uh, how much workload you need. Also, there is a very good blog on Kubernetes cluster autoscaler, uh, how to test the Kubernetes autoscaling with speed scale. You can actually do that. Like you can set the parameters and fine tune those values and the throughput as well. So this is the, this gives you like P99, uh, 95, all these latencies. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, to give you all the summaries of these. You can also create the test configs. Uh, so if if you go to like, uh, let's say chaos 25%, you can increase the number of responders, increase the uh, response rate, bad status code, no response, low data mode. So all these things you can edit that or you can create a new test uh, config as well and define your own set of config, whether you want to do load testing, whether you want to do chaos testing, Another important stuff are the snapshots. Uh, now, if you go to the snapshot, you can actually uh, replay this 
this particular snapshot onto the cluster uh, on the cluster name and the workload name. Or if you have systems where you have like GitOps enabled Argo CD and stuff, you can actually have the traffic deploy, traffic replay, uh, custom resource. So custom resource is the concept in Kubernetes. Uh, so you, you because you have the operator, uh, the speed scale operator already installed onto the cluster, they'll be able to understand the traffic replay custom resource when it is applied onto the cluster and you can always give the uh, snapshot id you can also generate the snapshot id using the apis and always use that on on every new build or every new merge to the master branch and that way you can do it in a more automated fashion another interesting thing uh, that you can use with speed scale is people are familiar with postman so via speed scale like you can capture that live traffic and export the snapshot as Postman. So let's do that. So in order to generate the export of your snapshot, you can simply use speed scale export Postman and the snapshot. So it, it, has, expect, it has successfully exported the Postman collection. Uh, there is one other thing that you can do with K6. So speed scale and it can export traffic in the open source uh, K6 test case format so you can use speed ctl export k6 with the snapshot id to export it as the k6 uh, format and run over there so the report is uh completed it was not getting it was stuck because there was speed scale api key missing for this particular cluster which i created and then this ran perfectly fine uh, so it didn't show the fancy graphs that i showed you earlier because the uh, replay is very less but anyways, uh, you got the concept clear um, of replaying the traffic onto different cluster, which is working. Uh, one other thing, like if you go to the snapshots, you I, I already showed you the CR and stuff, but you can also see the service map over here and the previous replays. So if you keep replaying this, so you'll be able to see the previous replays and you'll be able to see the latency and success rate. So this replay across the next versions of your API is wor working uh, the same as before or not. So that can help you in um, tracking those changes. So yeah, I think uh, a speed scale is what many companies are looking for. I mean, the solution like speed scale is what many companies are looking for uh, because speed scale does the replay of the traffic very well, uh, mocking the APIs very well, API performance testing very well, load and chaos testing very well, on the fly mock creation, testing before release, uh, giving you all the out of the box functionality so that you won't have to do much of the heavy, heavy lifting of writing those mocks and those uh, stuff for the testing of the APIs. And I think that they are improving more and more. Uh, there is also open source project um, by speed scale, which is speed scale CLI. Uh, so this also captures and inspects um, the request made to the local services, but it's just a local CLI tool. The main magic is the speed CTL and the speed scale uh, SaaS application itself. So yeah, go ahead and try this out. Uh, see which features fits your use case, whether it's service map, whether it's traffic viewer, whether it's exporting, capturing and exporting the traffic as Postman, exporting as K6, uh, integrating with those, whether it's... Uh, uh, capturing the traffic and replaying it onto a different cluster and so on and so forth like various use cases that you can use speed scale for let me know in the comment section if you like like speed scale and uh, try them out a very interesting tool in my opinion and uh, some of the things that can be improved is like more of self-hosted option i would say um, just like self-hosted gitlab maybe a self-hosted uh, speed scale would make sense uh, in the scenarios where people really care about their data and they do not want to send anything to a SaaS platform. So that can be a very interesting thing. And also uh, for the masked values, if it can automatically mask some of the, intelligently mask some of the stuff uh, like passwords, uh, DB URLs, DB password, and then mock it on the fly. And then again, the improvement on the third party integrations, which they already are doing very well, but uh, yeah, it can be it can it can be improved in my opinion. So those are some of my opinion on speed scale. Um, they have been a big time supporter for my channel, and hope you will check them out as well. Uh, a startup solving a very challenging and interesting uh, problem out there with respect to API testing, and. Uh, 
This video is brought to you by Armo Commodore Avesha Cystic Speed Scale Slim and Teleport. Make sure to check out everyone uh, in the description of the video. I have mentioned all the links. And do not forget to check out Cube Simplify Workshops. It is helping people getting certified, getting jobs, getting knowledge in the Kubernetes ecosystem. So make sure to check that out. And in the end, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, try out Speed Scale, and let them know in Twitter, LinkedIn that you watched the video, you tried it out and you liked it or not, uh, put that in the comment box. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you will be at HashiConf LA uh, or at Dubai GITEX, I'm traveling next week uh, to those conferences. So see you there if you are there.